I'll introduce you later. Okay. Uh, thank you all for coming. Uh, next item is uh, consideration and action on the uh, board agenda. What's the pleasure of the board? Make a uh, motion that we adopt the agenda. Is there a second? Second. It's been moved and seconded that we adopt the agenda, which you have all had for approximately a week. Uh, <clears throat> any discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Passes unanimously. Now it's time for public uh, participation, and this tonight we're pleased to have our re-elected sheriff with us, Sheriff Norman. <coughs> sheriff Norman, will you please come forward? We look forward to your comments. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you for having me. Thank you for coming in. Uh, I've come to you again to speak about a dare deal. It's got 137 plus thousand miles on it. It's an 04 board. Uh, the dare officer travels about six to seven more schools per year. He actually teaches at about six to seven different elementary schools per year. It's an 04 board. It was actually donated at one time by Q4. It has 137 plus thousand miles on it. It's basically given us some problems that we have to take it in and out of the garage here at the city county garage. And I'm asking uh, you guys to take into consideration again to supply me a vehicle for the air officer. I think I can find the money to equip that vehicle if you guys can find the money to buy a vehicle and leave it in the school books now. Thank you for your suggestion, and I'm sure that Dr. Fisher will be communicating with you in the future. Uh, we don't make that decision right. tonight right. on this exactly. basis, uh, basically because I think that's more administrative recommendation. Right. Than I came over, uh, for the record, I came over about 13 months ago, and she's not on this back of me. Uh, and the dear officer does come out and share some of his budget, so I'm just asking for the consistency. Thank you. It's time now for consideration of the minutes. Two sessions for the first take of minutes of October 13th, 2014 business session. What's the pleasure of the Moving seconded to adopt the amendments as presented for the October 13, 2014 business session. Any discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Passes unanimously. Thank you. Now, on to consideration of the minutes of the October 27, 2014 board work session. What's the pleasure of the board? Miller, it's been moved and seconded to approve the minutes of the October 27, 2014 board work session. Any discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Passes unanimously. Thank you. On the innovative leadership, uh, we have a recommendation from the Educational Foundation Board of Directors, Dr. Fisher. You can tell us about that. Just here, Mark Formality, I'm recusing myself. You know the great work that our education foundation does for our school system uh, every spring um, and this is a, a, a just a unique thing in cleveland county it's an awesome event uh, i know you guys have all been to the event but where our educational foundation gives a 500 dollars scholarship to every senior with a 4.0 and, and that along with a couple other events that we do are some of my favorite events to really recognize student success the great things that are going on in cleveland county uh, along with that, our Educational Foundation is very supportive uh, of many programs that we have. They, they support uh, a lot of the teacher and student recognition. Um, and, and it's our pleasure to work with the Cleveland uh, County Educational Foundation. According to their bylaws, um, the members of the Board of Directors uh, from, from, for the Educational Foundation are, are nominated from the Cleveland County Schools Board of Education. Um, and basically, we appoint the 
both have been nominated by the Educational Foundation Board of Directors as members of the Educational Board of Directors. Uh, we recommend your approval to name these four individuals as uh, Lee County Educational Board of Directors, Phil Walker, <coughs> Ben Cappins, Roger Harris, and Sandy Hammer. We respectfully request that this, the Board of Education elect or confirm uh, those nominees. Well, we have heard the recommendation Superintendent, what's the pleasure of the board? Well, we confirm the election of Phil Wallace, Ben Captain, Roger Harris, and Sandy Hammond to the Education Foundation Board of Directors. Second. Okay, and these are just new appointees. The other members, are there some that will not the board? It's been moved and seconded that we nominate these four individuals, that we approve these four individuals as member, uh, uh, members of the Board of Directors of the Educational Foundation. <clears throat> Any discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. It passes unanimously. Uh, Mr. Harris, you want somebody to go tell him to come back in? He's been, he's been elected. Next item is to consider the personnel report. Dr. Fisher, do you have anything to add to it? We've all had on our um, iPads last week. Uh, what's the pleasure of the board with regard to the personnel report? The sessions that we, sections that we have to approve. I'll make a motion to approve personnel items as recommended by the city. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Uh, approve the personnel items as recommended by the superintendent. I assume that includes the substitutes. Uh, <clears throat> any discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. Aye. Any, any opposed? No. <clears throat> Thank you. On to uh, 21st century systems, the EpiPen policy. Dr. Hopper, I believe you're going to handle that. Uh, 
Uh, so we will allow students to stay where they're at uh, and participate in the deal. And we'll assume they've been there two previous semesters. That is um, uh, consistent with what we've been doing. Uh, we would also, in that part, uh, we've, we've actually, our colonel and I have actually had a conversation probably creating a C there, <coughs> moving that last sentence there. Students have declared as homeless will be eligible for athletics even if they have not been enrolled or even if they have enrolled in less than two previous semesters. Uh, we will work with our student services department as an official declaration of the homeless student there. Uh, that brings us to section two, ineligible students. Uh, students that in grades 9 through 12 who are domiciled inside of Cleveland County who transfer into another Cleveland County school will be enabled to participate in interscholastic athletics for 365 days from the date of enrollment in the new school. Uh, and so that's a transfer within Cleveland County. That will be our recommendation. Uh, ninth grade students will transfer <coughs> out of county students. Basically, if you're transferring from out of county and you've been with us the two previous semesters, then you can be eligible. If you're uh, transferring from out of county, uh, that, that transfer rule would be, would be the same as you would uh, be ineligible for, for 365 days. Uh, if you are from out of county, also the, the North Carolina High School <coughs> Association, if you're in grades 10 through 12, lays in on that. There's a special waiver there that you have to get their approval for that. So that will be outside of the borders uh, around the, uh, the things. Uh, we put in the policy of the High School Athletic Association does waive that, and if you grant, they grant the waiver and that student will be eligible. Uh, we do have a process for students that, uh, that are uh, transferred uh, within our school system, within Cleveland County Schools, a waiver process. An athlete who has been deemed ineligible due to the above def defined transfer may request a waiver by the Athletic Transfer Review Committee in limited circumstances. A waiver request form will be available in the Office of the County Athletic Director. The County Athletic Director will notify the student and the parent of the committee decision. Uh, we gave several reasons here for that a waiver may be approved. Feeder school transfer, and this is, if a student went to the feeder middle school, they would be eligible at the high school if they went to that feeder middle school the two previous semesters. A medical or health related, uh, that would be a, a waiver option there. Uh, some, uh, specified requirement of social services or court system, uh, or student protection, uh, sibling policy, or hardship or special unique circumstances. And as you see in each one of those, uh, that the athletic director would work with that committee uh, and, and many times the student services coordinator or, or the, the uh, person in the LEA who's over that program would, would help them verify that. If the student had a medical health related issue, then that would be verified and documented on, on the form there. Uh, and then finally in section four, there's an appeal process. If the appeal, if the waiver was denied by the uh, athletic review committee, then basically they could have a board of education appeal hearing to gain them. So in short, in wrapping that up, uh, this draft policy with students that transfer would be ineligible for 365 days. Uh, then they could ask for a waiver to gain their eligibility. Uh, that waiver would go to the Athletic Review Committee. Uh, and I also included a sample form that would go to the Athletic Review Committee. If they met those criteria, then the 365-day uh, uh, sit-out, if you will, be waived, the student would automatically gain their eligibility. Uh, if, if, the, if it was not waived, the student was still eligible, then they would have the opportunity for uh, that appeal here. Generally, the timetable on this is most of our transfers happen in the uh, spring of the year. This, you know, we'll begin transfer, transfer period in, in February, March, and April, or actually February, March for the 2015, 2016 year. So we'll receive those transfers from Dr. McConnell's office. Uh, those transfers are usually brought to the board in about May. Parents are informed of those decisions. And then we would have May, June, and July to go through the, the hearing uh, the waiver process. And if the waiver was denied, go through the appeal process. So this would get time for, for all that to be settled before, uh, before school starts. Um, we would uh, be open to questions, suggestions, comments. I know that. Uh, been some comments to, to Dr. Hunnell. Uh, we have some time in this policy when you go ahead and get it to you to so have some discussion. We're not in a rush to, to adopt this, but we need to make sure that we do it before the transfer period starts. So we've got a little time. Uh, we will take some comments that you have tonight, some questions. Uh, I would encourage you to, to look over this, to, to talk about it, to call, call me or call Dr. Hunnell. Uh, we will also take this proposed policy to our attorneys. Uh, we've, we've talked to a couple athletic directors. Talk to our folks and revise that. Uh, the 
in uh, later December bring you back a post policy. So at that time, we could either amend again and then bring you a vote in January, or if it's where the board wanted in December, we could go ahead and approve that policy revision in January or in December. Uh, so at this time, Dr. Uh, Dr. Hammer, Mr. Chairman, I, I would open up to any comments, discussion, questions, and, and then I would invite the, the board members. I know you've looked at it for a couple of days, but, but spend some time looking through that. Give Dr. Hanna give give me some feedback. <coughs> to mold this to what we want it to look like. Yes, sir. I do like to make sure on that 365 days and we're within our school district. So if there's one thing I've got a question in uh, Dr. Hanna brought up in our workshop that a cheerleader a cheerleader is not a sport. I think we need to bring that in because we had a student this past. Uh, year to put in they were at another school and jury hadn't started and they came in march from my understanding to put in that they would be here when school started you know the following uh, that year and uh i believe that job had to set out 365 days uh coming from another school district and i uh, understood that he surely don't don't classify as sport so they are in competition and they get cut so just like a baseball player football player whatever whatever so i feel like we ought to consider them uh, in in this draft that we're doing uh, football players baseball players basketball soccer whatever i think cheerleaders all have to meet <coughs> Ms. Wayne, I would agree, and that's a great point to bring cheerleaders in because the cheerleaders are not covered in the Northern House Athletic Association uh, manual. But uh, one of the things I know with that's, you know, sometimes in particular situations, you know, a child wouldn't enroll in tryouts, and then it's not that they had to sit out 360, 365 days, it's that they weren't enrolled in tryouts, and so tryouts happened at one time. But we will definitely uh, look at the cheerleader uh, piece and, and, and put some caveat in there with cheerleaders in, in that as well. So just to understand what he's talking about there. It wasn't that the child was told that they had to sit out for 365 days, it was just that they had to try. They weren't enrolled in the school of trials, therefore they had to wait for the next trial period to and make some money. Uh, but they were willing to sign a waiver, and the whole, uh, by my understanding, they were willing to sign a waiver, and uh, knowing that they were going to be here, and were, were, they going, were they willing to try to dry out, even though they wasn't here? So with that, that waiver form, that, that brings some, some liability questions and some all those things, but I, but I think we, I think when I look at our transfers, we get addressed. But in our policy, we'll look at some, we'll look at the cheerleaders in particular to, to be able to address that. If we can put uh, uh, something in there, Mr. Blank, that, that directly uh, addresses cheerleaders as it relates to transfers and eligibility. Yes, sir, Mr. Taylor. Dr. Fisher, I've got a couple questions. The first one. Did I understand you correctly to say that cheerleading is not in the North Carolina High School Athletic Association it's, manual? It's, it's in the manual, but it's not recognized. Dr. Hunter, you may want to no, it's, it's, it used to be classified as an activity and not a sport, but the, the, the requirements and all the other stuff was in the manual. Yeah, I've done a little research on that, and just to clarify that, we did not say it's not a sport. The High School Athletic Association. They call it an activity. That's correct. Yes. Please. Yeah. Yes. And, and I think you're right. It's, it, it's a cover in the manual, but yeah. it's not listed as a. Or it's a qualification and all that. We'll get a little clarification on that. My second question, North Carolina High School Athletic Association considers the definition of residence and domicile to be the same thing, even though attorneys don't. Is it under this policy, would we recognize the definition of domicile and residence to be the same thing? Yeah, and we would look at it, yes, the way the High School Athletic Association puts that. Okay, thank you. Any other suggestions as of the moment? One thing I noticed, excuse me, this is just a comment, Mr. Chair. Well, I do know the state of your action of the board. You know, this is not an action item. This is not an action item. But my point is, while I respect the majority of the board's wishes as to whether they would support this policy, but I just wanted to express a little bit of my concern uh, as to whether I would support, you know, And that, of course, is with the Section 2 of the ability of students. Uh, sorry. My concern with uh, Section 2 with the eligible students, <clears throat> whereas uh, 
there is, there is a waiver process, which I understand and I appreciate the rationale. I guess my concern is that it seemed to suggest to me that a person who uh, is considered ineligible, subject to uh, going through these waiver process, appears to me as, uh, that a person or a student is guilty to prove it innocent, in my interpretation. Uh, and again, that's just a comment. It's not to challenge the provision. I'm just sort of conveying and sharing, you know, some of my concerns and some of my reluctance uh, with this ineligibility uh, provision, uh, whereas they are automatically considered ineligible, subject to passing, you know, those four or five provisions to prove that they're eligible to participate. To me, my interpretation is that it makes a uh, student uh, appear to be guilty until proven innocent. And so that's my issue. Uh, Mr. I want them to come up with 
and, you know, grace as well. I think there's a balance there. You don't just want to be tough at the lack of not doing what's best for every child. Now, there are incidents and situations that occur like it or not where you have to look at each um, situation individually. And I do like the fact that we are taking into account and not just saying that if you live in a certain area, you can't go anywhere else but this school. I think you have to look at it. And also, you know, we're looking at athletics here. Um, you know, what about academics and things like that? I feel like we focus so much on this, and I know we got to have policies in place. But I think academics is important, too. And I think, you know, we're always looking at this piece, but, you know, we talk about doing what's best for every child and taking the stand. We got to look at the academic piece, and I feel like we're talking about this, which is important. This is on the agenda. But, you know, we have to give every child an opportunity and not penalize a child because they happen to play a sport. They happen to do it. You know, I think sometimes we penalize a kid because they, they play sports. But I do like the work that you've done, Dr. Hummel, Dr. Fisher. I think this gives us coverage. And it doesn't, it's not so rigid as to say that, you know, if you live somewhere, you can't play a sport at another school, da, da. I think we're given an opportunity that doesn't guarantee that they're going to get it because they're going to have to come with more committed that's going to be made of people throughout this county. But I do like the fact that we're giving ourselves some parameters to get some freedom in. It was lost. We did try to, to use the high school athletic students and all that. Um, uh, and then, then, you know, bring in because they do have a two semester issue. Okay, got in there. But there's some of those things. I guess I, I would encourage the board to, 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 to call on your home, give me a call. Send, send some feedback uh, through email, call, and we talk to you, and then we'll, we'll, we'll make some revisions to this uh, as we end up with this uh, uh, policy adoption. I'll call on Mark. Who taught me that? <clears throat> I like to kind of go off of what Richard said. I'm, I kind of see a little bit of what he's saying is, is that we're kind of, we're kind of saying to that student, if you move from school A to school B, you're doing it for the wrong reasons. You're doing it because of the athletic. And we're asking them to prove that. I feel like we're kind of going at that a little bit the wrong way. And I see what Richard is saying on that. Uh, I think we have a, a pretty stiff world right now. I, I think Dr. Hunter uh, does a great job. I think Dr. Fisher did a great job when he was in that position that when we had those red flags or we had that circumstance with a student transfer and they happened to be uh, an athlete that was pretty good that, you know, they did the investigation work and, and we went that extra mile to make sure that they were doing it for the right reasons. I think we were pretty tough on that to make sure we were doing it. So, kind of like Richard, you know, I, I have a second thoughts whether I could go with this policy or not. It's just that, uh, I don't know. And Mr. Chair, just finally, um, you know, I'm not opposed to the recommendation coming from the uh, North Carolina Student Athletic Association. I, in fact, endorse overwhelmingly the majority of those recommendations. <coughs> it's just an issue of principle in, in this particular area here, and I'm not opposed to sh trying to shift the, you know, the decision of what the majority of the board feels. It's just, you know, my uh, just exercising the spirit of independent thinking. Uh, it's all I'm doing. In, in, sharing my thoughts, uh, but not to try to shift it, the decision of, of the board from one direction to the other and just express it like you. Can, can I just clarify in my mind, because you said we have always had in our policy, we followed the High School Athletic Association recommendations, but then we added our current policy the way it is now, we added the, the part that, or we adopted the part that the athletic association agreed with it, or the LEA could have their own procedure, and so that's that's what we've been operating under currently. And so, what we're doing is taking that one clause out and specifying what our procedure is. And our procedure, if we adopt this policy, would be to have a review committee to see if if those athletes would be eligible to play if they, they transfer. So it's not a drastic shift in our policy. It's basically adding the committee to review those transfer requests. It, it really is not. It, the change is that in the past, and this has been the case for the last several years, that basically if a student got a board approved transfer, we make them automatically eligible. Right. That was 
that was our that was our local LEA criteria criteria for approved transfer uh, made available. Uh, now we are saying that the board of transfer, you, we would give you a board of transfer, but that does not automatically make available. Right. Now for your eligibility, you must go through and meet the criteria.
that's a big concern as we look at some grading schools on the A through F system of how closely correlated school grades and percent uh, free or reduced lunch is. Uh, so we have some, some, some great concerns uh, for that. Uh, I won't read the entire resolution to you because it's, it's somewhat lengthy, uh, but, but you have adopted it. I did, uh, we did uh, make, the, you've got two copies of the resolution there. Our recommendation is to, to, uh, to adopt the resolution uh, without, uh, you can see the ones up at your, at your table, the paper copies, uh, to remove two paragraphs. Uh, this, these school grades are not public yet. Uh, that is not public information yet. That has not been released. Uh, if you remember, uh, the, the school grades were originally anticipated to be released in October. Uh, for some reason, that was pushed back to January. Uh, and so the release of school grades is to January. So we would recommend uh, the adoption of the resolution that, that omits uh, the two paragraphs there that would refer to a school and a particular grade as an example. Uh, I do not feel like that would be in our best interest. Some school districts are going ahead and doing that, but I don't I think they'd be all too keep our um, general not, not uh, uh, list of specific schools. So you've got uh, our proposed copy there uh, that's on board docs now. Yeah. 
adamant about that, and uh, I had so expressed that we were going to see me going forward. But I hope we can stop. Let's do a question, Jesus.
but if you have a, such a tight window when school has to start and when school has to stop, that it is, it is a challenge, a challenge for me. One of the things that's lost many times in this is uh, we talk about the exams at Christmas, but we also talk about AP exams. That it, it, uh, students have to take AP exam at a set time. That, that we don't see it. We don't have that role to set that. That's set by uh, some AP. And our students, if we start that semester at the end of January, that AP uh, test comes about 12 weeks into the semester where we would buy that calendar up and have local control. Our students are taking an AP exam would have you know, a more appropriate time. And that, that impacts our students because our students that are taking these AP courses are competing against students from South Carolina, Tennessee, or Virginia who, who uh, just look at the boards have, have that control. So this resolution, again, I won't, uh, I won't read it to you uh, in its entirety, but this resolution does does ask to uh, uh, the, the general assembly mayor in support of the school board association and the administrative associations to be able to, to, to restore the level of authority uh, school boards for safety.
know they've been here and have moved. Uh, do they have a release from the uh, side of the box? Okay. That's my question. Yes, sir, Mr. Blank. I, I've got two. Are they residing here at North Carolina, at North Carolina now, or are they commuting from South Carolina to here? So they're, they're, they're in South Carolina. They still live in South Carolina? So they live in our county park. They moved to South Carolina. Oh, okay. All right. And they would like to finish high school at that first high school. Okay, and second, uh, we're sitting in a problem. There are one issue here at uh, this issues. Uh, are we sending the problem to another school? Excuse me, I'm sorry. No, we are not the answer to your question. <laughs> Thank you. Ms. Holmes, you got your satisfactory answer? Yes. Come on, Rick. Any further discussion? <laughs> All in favor of uh, approving the uh, student transfer request, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Passes unanimously. Next, the board will entertain a motion to recess back to uh, the executive session on discipline and hearing. Second. Move and moved and seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Passes unanimously. Thank you.